The real thing we need to be talking about. Did you guys see Moose's diaper? She yes! <laughs> it was so sick. I was like seven of them. We got a match. Now? No. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> have a game plan i was winging it yo right now you listening to the cart charisma athleticism and raw talent and what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact don't you dare miss a lesson oh yeah whoa i don't remember the bong rips being in that segment kyle what are you doing over there <coughs> Sorry, Trent. My bad. My bad. Sorry. Oh, you all right? Oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Start all right. Just check. All right. All right. Here we go. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans. Brought to you by the Impact Lounge, the number one place for Impact Wrestling news and discussion. My name is Trent, along with my co-host, Kyle. What's up, Kyle? It's a celebration tonight. Yeah. Back with another podcast with the Impact Tribe. Uh, Glad to be back, Trent. Feels good. Feels good. Feels real good to be back with our tribe, man. And our tribe is doing fantastic. We are going to be breaking down the November 15th episode of Impact Wrestling, the first show from Las Vegas on the Vegas tapings. And uh, speaking of our our tribe, our crew, we're going right to the loungers here. We're going to go right like we do. We kick off every show, Kyle. We're going to read listener feedback, my friend. Listener feedback. What do you say? Get right into it. All right, we had a lot of goddamn comments this week. We thank you guys because that's awesome. We love uh, we we'll love the interaction, and uh, we even had a couple of shout outs from our fellow uh, Impact Lounge brothers, uh, Adam and Roe gave us some shouts too. So quick shout out to those guys. Listen to their show today. Appreciate that, boys. Uh, let's let's jump in here, man. We um we had a couple of good comments here. We had uh, Steve Ewan said, "Hey, Kyle and Trent, love how you do the Impact review." And I got an idea, if you like it. After each set of tapings, conclude your review with one favorite match of the set, which superstars look good and bad heading into the next show, favorite video or promo, and favorite heel or face of the set. I love that idea, Kyle. What do you think about that? Thumbs up! Thumbs up! Yeah, Steve, we're, we're going to take that one down. I like that idea a lot. Uh, since each set of tapings is, is kind of is kind of like its own thing, I like that. That's cool. All right. Uh, we had Distiller85 agreed with you on the Eddie and Moose being ma- candidate for match of the year, Kyle. So uh, that's a good one right there. Let's see. Uh, I had Distiller also disagree with me, though. He agreed with you, but he disagreed with me on Jordan Grace's uh, finisher. He liked the bear hug as a finisher. And he was saying that one thing I miss in wrestling is submissions held for a long time when you genuinely don't know if the opponent's going to tap out. And with these days, everything being rushed, it, it's kind of cool. You know what? That's a good argument. That's a good explanation why. Good explanation why. The still, I'm going to give you that one. It's kind of kind of good, man. I'll 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 work with you on that. But Kyle, we had a good. We had a real. Uh, we had we had somebody jump in and just take us both down here, man. Uh, you probably saw this. Dancing Mike came in with us. What a name, Dancing Mike. Dancing Love Mike. It. He came in and said, we're both wrong on the pizza. He said, it should be thin, crispy crust, not Chicago cake or New York greasy cardboard. Whoa. But, well, yeah. I'm but, down but, there, pal. Watch it. And I th- he, he ties it in by saying, I love the show. Great job, guys. I listen on Podcast Addict, so I'm sometimes a bit late getting the show. I didn't even I've know never heard of that. I've never heard of that. I don't know what Podcast Addict is. No I don't idea. Think the podcast is on podcast addict. If it is, I appreciate it. Awesome. I, hey, I had no idea we were on there, but man, if we're on podcast addict, thank you very much, Dancing Mike. Uh, we went back and forth with Dancing Mike, and we found out that he's getting his pizza from Tennessee. 
The volunteer state. Go Vols. The volunteer state. Kyle, this is this is like, dude, I got I to gotta divert here, man. This is like, he threw us a wrench. We're talking New York, Chicago. He comes with Tennessee. Who the fuck talks about Tennessee pizza? I've never heard it before. You know what, Dancing Mike? I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Oh. Taking the time to jump in the comments and be a part of the Impact Tribe. I appreciate you. However, Dancing Mike, I don't blame you for being insecure about Tennessee pizza. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know what you guys eat in Tennessee. Uh, you know, probably uh, what's in Tennessee? More of like a, a southern barbecue Dude, type barbecue. of thing. You know, That's, like the, barbecue the best barbecue day. in the world, probably. You know, but uh, when it comes to pizza, I don't think. I don't think that's your thing over there. So for for you to attack Chicago and New York pizza, which aside from going to Italy is the two pizza capitals of the entire oh, planet, of the entire planet. You can't go against Chicago and New York pizza. So, you know, I feel bad for you. You got to eat whatever you're eating in Tennessee. It's probably, uh, what is it? DiGiorno, Elio's. There's pizza and there's pizza pizza. Very different. Pizza, pizza, you can't get it in Tennessee. So I'm looking into uh, maybe we could like uh, somehow uh, freeze some pizza and like overnight it to this guy. The Tennessee, is that possible? Can we do that, Trent? We're Would not, it make it to him? We're not going to be doing that, Kyle. You, you spent entirely too much time talking about that explanation on pizza. We're not, I'm not sending this guy pizza. He can come Total up to Chicago and get pizza. Total pizza podcast, Trent. Total <laughs> nonstop, nonstop pizza. pizza. That's what like we're it. doing. I like TNP. It's pretty good. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Mike, keep coming back every week to the comments. And that's another thing. If you drop your comment and we read it on the show, don't think that it was like a one-time deal and you you know uh, you got your rocks off and it's over. Like, please come back every single week. If you guys don't come back, we don't come back. You're part of the show, and without you guys, there's no us, no interaction. BQ is going to throw us out, Trent. Uh, no, he's not throwing out anything. Look at these numbers, baby. The ratings don't lie. The numbers are there, thanks to you guys. All right, well, I'm going to do a few. Rob. Keep it coming, baby. All right, I'm gonna do a few more comments. We're going to get to the review here. Uh, Eddie Peligro said, another great show, guys. Regarding Eli Drake, I think they missed a great opportunity turning him face at Bound for Glory after whooping the guy with no chin. Eight-year-olds, dude. Once Abyss came out, that chance was gone. I totally agree with that. You and I have talked about that, Kyle. Uh he says, I hope Impact have Eli taken out these flippy and hardcore guys at a New Year taping run feud with uh, between Eli and Eddie Kingston. Those two guys can hold it on the mic. It'd be a great bill for a pay-per-view and turn Eli face during the way. I totally like it. I am down with that idea. Uh, Eli should definitely become a crusader against the flippy shit. That'd be awesome. It's perfect character for him right now. Thumbs up. Uh, Dig it. Thumbs up. Distiller again with another comment. He said, I love the RoboCop comment. I just watched it on Netflix yesterday. I made a very rare comment about, uh, obscure comment about RoboCop 87. Distiller caught it. Thank you, Distiller, for that. Uh, Daniel Bishop said, I took it all the way back to McDonald's with the $4 VHS collection. Uh, he, got, he had a few from there. That's, that's another one for the old school guys like me, Kyle, who bought VHS tapes along with our hamburgers. That's something that will never be done today. Uh, so, Daniel Bishop, thanks for making me uh, not feel so damn old. Old bastards. Uh, Mir Neesom said you should do a dummy of the week. Dummy, yeah. We we do dummies of the week. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> we do dummy of the week every week. That's yeah, kind of part dummy. of the podcast. Yeah, dummy. You know what? I think, uh, who was that? Who, who was the commenter who wrote that? Yeah, that was Mir, members that? Mir Neesom. Mir Neesom has been hanging out with the rascals, I think. I think he was part of that smoke session earlier on. Maybe. All right, I got a couple more good ones here. Uh, Cardina, Cardination, Cardination. There you go, Cardination 420. So he was hanging out with the Rascals. He says, uh, I really thought Cross and Johnny Impact match was average. No one in that crowd thought Cross was winning and they didn't have good chemistry. Unfortunately, after that match was over, I don't know about the chemistry. I didn't think the chemistry was bad, but the crowd, I think you're right. They didn't think it was going to happen that quick. Uh, Steve Hudson says, what, what a great review. Wish Killer Cross had lost by DQ, so he could have kept his no pins, no submission streak. Also, where can I find that EC3 Eli Drake Trouble Dummy song? That's hilarious. Dummy, 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 dummy.
HSG Sabu66 says the sound bites are genius. Kyle, that's a shout out to you, partner. No, no, sound no. bites are genius. That's you all know, Kyle, guys. Sound bites. You know I love my bites. La that is, that is uh that is all that's all Kyle, guys. He's a morning zoo guy. So that's that's where the sound bites come in. I think uh, um the moose in my ass. In my that ass. One. Yeah, that one right there. I think that was the best one we've dropped so far. In my ass. Yeah, absolutely. Uh dancing Mike came on with another one. This one I, I this is the one that I really liked. I'm gonna read this and we're gonna this will be the last comment. We're gonna jump on. Uh, jump out the review. All right. So Dancing Mike said, I hate that they let Johnny Impact kill the Killer Cross mystique so soon. I'm not a fan of Johnny at all. His promos are wooden, boring, cringeworthy. And while he's an amazing gymnast, he might as well wrestle while having a ribbon on a stick because his offense is awful. It makes Jeff Hardy's offense look like Bruiser Brody in comparison. Starship Payne has to be in the top five of the worst world champ finishers. I think the Steiner recliner might be more painful and the second rope flip that occasionally hits a glancing blow on his opponent. 200%. I agree with this. And at the Jeff Hardy comparison, how he barely hit a sw- I mean, it's like, how the hell is the swan? That, that's the finish. Starship paint. I think Mike is right. You need a stronger finisher because that, it's like you hit the guy with everything else throughout the match, but a little flippy elbow is going to off the second ropes. What's going to, what's going to take the guy down? Just, I don't know. I'm, I'm with Mike on this one. What do you think, Kyle? I think you guys need to smoke a little weed. All right, that, that's that's enough. That's enough out of you. All right, we're getting into the review here. All right, guys, we are jumping in to the November 15th episode of Impact Wrestling Impact after Dark Impact on Pop. And we're gonna we're kicking it off. They kicked off with they uh they kicked off with a with a knockouts match, Kyle. They went uh, Tessa and they had a newcomer, Ray Lynn. I think she's local to the FSW promotion they partnered with. Ray Lynn, never heard of her. Uh Tessa kicked the shit out of her, pretty much dominated the whole thing. Ray Lynn, I don't know, man. She was kind of she was kind of robotic. You know, she she was a formula wrestler, which I like to call. Form, she sequence of the moves that she learns in class, and she was just going through the sequence. But again, nobody thought she had a chance. Uh Tessa beat the shit out of her, took her out. Uh hammerlock DDT for the win. It was a super stiff hammerlock DDT. Uh, I don't know what you think about Raylan, Kyle. Easy on the eyes, not so much in the uh, in the talent department. What do you say? It was a quickie. It was a quickie. We knew yeah. what it was. Yeah, she, she didn't get the win. Tessa went out. You know, by hook or by crook. You know, Tessa Blanchard's always going to go out on top. That's what yeah. it's been. Uh, that's been the recent uh, sequence of events lately. Yeah, and uh, so after she wins, Taya comes out. And uh, oh, Tessa gets in the mic first and then says Tyus called her every name in the book, come up with an, ex- with an excuse for not beating her. But then, uh, you know, Tessa's like, I'm going to call it like it is. And Taya isn't the champion that she is, that she can be. And she's a better champion than Taya could ever be. And she wants to know how Taya feels to know that she'll never be anything but Johnny Impact's wife. And then Taya comes out. And these big ass heels she was wearing. Did you catch these heels, man? These these were like she was running in these goddamn heels. I don't know why I was up with that. Seriously. But uh, she gets on the mic and she tells Tessa that she spoke to management, Impact Management, which I love because it's like Don Callis, and he plays it up like, "Who does she talk to?" Oh my god, Josh. But uh, and she said they're gonna face off one more time, January sixth, in Nashville at the Homecoming pay per view. Taya is now going, really branding the La Huera Loca La gimmick. Huera and I noticed, Loca. Kyle, she had new music. She's not coming out to like that uh, that epic Game of Thrones-like music anymore. She's coming out to this uh, this new kind of energetic music, a little more along the lines of her husband. I don't know if you caught that. I don't know if La Huera Loca. That. It's more like La Huera Loca. It should be uh, living La Huera Loca. But you know what, Trent? <laughs> uh, I, I, I just think it's like there was the two matches – so Ty is going to get a third match at the pay-per-view. Tessa cheated twice, like I said before, by hook or by crook. You know Tessa Blanchard's going out on top. However, th- why isn't there a, stipula- a stipulation to stop Tessa from cheating? What's the point of having a match at homecoming a third time knowing Tessa is probably going to cheat to get the win? you got to set a stipulation, but we have plenty of weeks to build towards the match so 
I guess it's not something that has to be announced right away, but you have to add a stipulation going into homecoming because it it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Of course, Tessa is going to cheat a third time. Why wouldn't she? If from a logical, you know, way of thinking. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree. It's like, uh, you, you got time to put a step on it, and I think it, it, it would have been too soon if they announced the step just now. They still got to build this up for another month, you know, about five five weeks. I'm planning on going to that show. A bunch of people from here in Chicago want to take a road trip down. That's going to be January 6th. Tickets go on sale on uh, November 20th, guys. So uh, take a look. Get your tickets if you're going to that. I think I'm going, so if anybody wants to meet me, I'll be signing some autographs, Kyle, taking pictures. With the fans, with the tribe, the Impact tribe, the loungers, everybody. I'm taking pictures with everybody. I mean, I took a picture with you. I even, I even gave you a – did I give you an autograph too? I don't think you took oh, the autograph. Oh, good for you. <laughs> oh, good uh, for you. You know what, Trent, I got to say, uh, I would love to go, but I'm broke. I don't have any money to go. Maybe we get a GoFundMe going. Maybe we could crowdfund, get oh, Kyle the homecoming. <laughs> Help me out, Impact tribe. <laughs> Hey, get Kyle. <laughs> you know what's interesting, Kyle? I'll be in Nashville. Maybe I can try some of that Nashville pizza that, uh, that Mike was telling us about. Oh, man, Nashville pizza. Oh, God. No I don't way. Even know. I'm, I don't I'm even not, know. You couldn't pay me to do that. But look, if you All got right. an extra ticket, you, you got some extra money, you want to fly your favorite podcaster, Kyle, over to Tennessee from Long Island, New York, to come hang out with you, mo- mooch on your food. You could buy me drinks all night, you know. Uh, I'll I'll watch the pay per view with you. We'll hang out. It, all right, poll to the poll to the listeners, poll to the tribe. You guys, do you want do you want Kyle at homecoming? Do you want to take Kyle to homecoming? If there are enough people, I'll be your Kyle, homecoming date. If enough people want Kyle to be at homecoming as their homecoming date, let us know in the comments. <laughs> and I shit you not, Kyle. If there's enough interest in this goddamn thing, I think we should. Uh, I think we should get you to homecoming. <laughs> I, I will be your homecoming queen. Listen, Kyle, yeah, Kyle can play the bitch and be the homecoming queen. <laughs> she, he could be the, he could be the, he could be the queen. And I think Kyle, if somebody pays for you to go down to Tennessee and and uh, go to the show, I think you'll have I'm no problem. I'm not putting problem. out, Trent. I'm not putting out. I, I mean, I'm just getting. I mean, listen, you gotta sweeten the deal here, man. I mean, come on. <laughs> Dude, you want people to fl- someone to fly your ass out to Tennessee? You, you, you might have to loosen loosen a couple notches on the belt, my friend. I mean, loosen up a little bit here. That's I'm enough, saying, Fred. Move along. Move all right, move along. along. Move, all right, that, that's just, that's enough. All right, hey, uh, we went from that, man, my friend, and then uh, Josh and Don start plugging the uh, the poker chips and the and the the cards, the Impact branded uh, gambling merchandise. I don't know why, Kyle. I kind of wanted. It'd be kind of just fun to have it. I wish there was they dice. They have uh, packages at shopimpact.com. Go get it. Uh, they I have, saw that. Uh, the poker chips. They have the cards. They have, you get a package of all of them together. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, we go from that. We see KM and Fala in the casino. Gambling away. There's a lot of pictures, Kyle, of these two on uh, hitting slots all weekend, which was pretty funny. And uh, what I thought was even funnier was they were walking around in their getup. Like, Fala was in costume walking around the uh walking around the casino man i don't know i thought it was hilarious that's amazing they run into scarlet and uh she tells them to win big and then she pulled some strings to get them a match with lax and if they win tonight they'll get a title shot and if they get gold they get scarlet and once again followed by faints he is <laughs> out for the count my friend wow. um bah, he is down by uh we go from that kyle to the I'm going to say the highlight of the show. I'm going to highlight of the show. Rascals promo. We open up with Desmond Xavier rising up in a cloud of smoke. And basically, Kyle, it's the That 70s Show basement weed cipher. The the Rascals made up of Desmond Xavier, Zach Wentz, and Trey Miguel are smoked out laughing their asses off. And basically, Kyle, this looks like one of your impact parties, doesn't it? All right, well, there you go. Next time you can get the uh, the rascals over to your house. But uh, that's what I'm saying. But you know what, Trent? You know what, Trent? When I see the rascals promo, the guys having fun. I've waited a long time for this, Trent. It's 2018. Look at where we are. Look at the progression. The, the potheads, the stoners of America, have finally gotten representation 
in professional wrestling. That's we have true. waited a long time for this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's my rant music. We have waited a long time. The potheads, <laughs> we sat, we waited, we smoked our weed watching our wrestling, and we said someday, someday our lifestyle will be accepted and we will be represented on professional wrestling. I feel like the African Americans when Rosa Parks sat down oh. on the bus. I feel All like right. the transgenders when Bruce Jenner became Caitlyn Jenner. I got my representation in professional wrestling. It's a beautiful day, Trent. Oh, good lord! All right, we are, we are. That show's over. I guess we just got kicked off the lounge. That's it. What? That's what? the end of that. What? That well, was. was I didn't run. lie. It was a good run, everybody. Thank you very much for listening. I didn't lie. I told the I'm... truth. That's a funny thing, though, because it just shows the 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 difference in personalities on this podcast. Like to the listeners that don't know, like Trent has never been drunk in his life. He doesn't drink any alcohol. He's never drank any alcohol. He's no. never smoked, never inhaled a cigarette, weed, anything. Me, I like a good party. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll say I, I got my, my stuff together, I guess. But I, I don't party too much, you know. But let's just say Friday and Saturday nights, I like to go out. I like to have a good time. Trent over here, never, never. Well, he well, finds that's... enjoyment in other things in life. He just no, he exactly. Get whacked out. Exactly. Well, you know, the only thing I have, uh, that, yeah, no drugs, no booze. I have a, a lot hu- of demons to bury, Trent. I've had a hookah. I've, I like my hookah. You know, I'll do the flavored stuff, and then I'll do uh, uh, a nice cigar every now and then. You know, be, like you don't have to. Head on your shoulders. You don't like to get yeah. messed up. I'll tell you what. Side note, I my live buddy, for getting messed up. One of my buddies. One of my. <laughs> one of my buddies. Uh, just ordered some uh, American Rebel cigars, which I guess I found out is a company owned by Cody Rhodes and. Uh, Frankie Kazarian, and uh, they're putting out premium cigars. And he texted me today, and he said, "I'm gonna." He's like, well, I'm, "I got, a, I bought a five pack, and we're, we're having one of these. And they're super premium cigars." So, ladies and gentlemen, just a side disclaimer here: we don't encourage any of this, uh, this kind of uh, behavior that Kyle's I'm speaking about. For our younger listeners out there, we want, we'd rather you follow in my footsteps than Kyle's footsteps because it's, you know, that is that is that is behavior that is not acceptable by by impact lounge management. So just a little side note, everybody, you know, continue on your merry way. Thank Trent you. has a nice corporate job and I'm doing nothing with my life. So that's all you need to know. Younger listeners. Don't there be like, you me. Go. don't be like Kyle. Be like me. I'm a great example. Follow me. All right. Follow me kids. Kyle's great though. I mean, if you want, you want to, but always support <laughs> impact. That's what's the most important. Always <laughs> that's the support basis. Impact. Support, support impact. Damn right. Damn right. All right. God, we are moving slow here. My friend, we are, we are just getting to the second match. Uh, a lot of slot the damn rascals, the goddamn rascals have uh have, have, de- have derailed us. But look, side note, I love these three guys. I know them all from AW. These are three of the of the best dudes you can have in a locker room. They're cool as shit. Uh, I really love working with them. I just did a thing with Desmond and uh, Zach. We just did a segment uh, last weekend. We did. I, I produced a, a vignette with them. That was on AEW's Legacy Show. Uh, check it out, AEW Pro t- on Twitter. It's on there. Take a look. It's hilarious. And Trey is, is my guy. Dude. Me and Trey are always trying to come up with something. So uh, all three great dudes. So happy they're on the show. Uh, we went from there, guys, to uh, LAX taking on Cam and Fala Ba. And, uh, dude, what a good match this was. I don't know about you, Kyle. This was a sleeper hit. Let me let me break it down. We'll, we'll, then, we'll, uh, then we'll analyze it. Uh, start off, you know, Santana tries to budge Fala. He can't do it. Shoulder block, sunset flips, standing moonsaults, cannot move Fala. So he goes for the handshake, catches him with the leaping in Seguri instead. Ortiz tags in, knocks Cam off the apron. They dump Ba to the floor as well. Ortiz takes a dive, and then Ba rolls up to the apron with a back kick, which I couldn't even believe, Kyle, that he pulled off. And the crowd popped. I don't know if you heard that. The crowd was like... Dude, he did like a Pele kick uh, on, you know, to uh, I think it was Ortiz. And it was fantastic. Something very consistent with Falaba. He always steals the show. This is just another example of Falaba stealing the show. That's what he does. And Fala and KM together are so lovable, man. Let me me tell you. I I, Before they even had the match earlier in the show when uh, they ran up to Scarlet, like, you see the guys on camera and, like, it's just a feel-good thing. Like, they need to have that moment. We need to – we need that as fans. We need that moment. We got to have – KM and follow 
win the Impact World Tag Team Championships. Bah. We need that. Yeah, I agree, man. These two, if you follow either one of them on social media also, they're always hanging out, dude. Like, they're best friends, which I love. I love seeing that. Like, these guys, like, legit like each other. And it shows on TV, dude. They're, they're hilarious. But uh, you know, in the end, it was uh, you know, Ba went for a bonsai drop, but Santana pulled Cam into Ba, knocks him to the floor, double ca- double knockout kick and a lion salt leg drop combo took Cam out. So Cam took the pin. But man, they both look good. Even Cam, it's great balance. Ba is like this lovable panda bear pulling out moves you wouldn't expect him to, and then Cam's this, this ball of energy and like the powerhouse. And they're like a perfect combo, man. They're awesome. Both a lot. Ton of charisma. Great great guys to put together. But LAX takes the win. And LAX always delivers, man. L- let me tell you, those guys always have a great match. No matter what. You put LAX out there, you're going to give the fans their money's worth. And uh, one thing I uh, really caught my attention at the end of this match, uh, I really love how LAX, like they have the street sweeper. But it's yeah. not their set, like, finishing move. Like, they have at least three of them. Like, they have an arsenal. Like, they're always switching it up. Uh, I love variety, man. I love always, you know, just uh, it's refreshing. You know, it's just refreshing. I'll be seeing these guys in about two, three weeks. Now I'm going to see be seeing them over here in Chicago. So I'll be, uh, I'll talk to them. I'll tell them you said hello. If anybody wants me to ask them anything, any, 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 uh, anybody listening, any of our Impact Tribe want me to ask LAX anything? I mean, nothing too crazy. You know, just a casual. I'm, I'll be talking to them. Uh, let me know. Maybe maybe I'll get a couple of questions answered for you guys. So uh, throw it out there. Just, just putting that out there. Put in the comments. What do you want me to ask them? You know but, what you uh, should do? You should ask them for an interview and pretend it's for AAW. Like, lie and say it's for AAW. And, and just, just like, ask them give Impact it to us. questions. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like... <laughs> Tell them it's for AAW and just, you know, say a bunch of Impact things and just give the audio to us. They'll never even know about it. They'll just give it to us in the Impact Tribe. We can cut this out and pretend we didn't even plan it like this. You know what I'm <laughs> All right, continue. All right, so after that, there was a, a Don Callis line that you pointed out. Uh, Kyle, you want, you want to tell the listeners and see if anybody else caught this line? I thought that was funny. Once, oh, once you... Once you reminded me of this line, I thought I was, it was pretty uh, funny. Yeah, yeah, before we came in, I was laughing, telling you. Uh, I thought it was hysterical when uh, Josh was plugging the movie. Uh, his, uh, what was it? Uh, Splash. 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 Yeah, Splash. Uh, uh, some movie Splash. You know, Josh, he's always plugging his pop TV stuff. Josh is great with that. Uh, he's plugging a movie called Splash. And he mentions that it's about a mermaid. And uh, just Don chiming in there saying that uh, he hopes that there's a mermaid in the hot tub here tonight at the Sam's Town for them. And, uh, <laughs> he, he's just saying, what does he say? Uh, get your snorkel, kid. He tells Josh to get the snorkel. Like, what? Like, J- Don Callis with the creepy comments, man. It's hysterical. Hysterical. You you do love your your Don Callis, like, little side one-liners. He's the you? best. You ever been to a bachelorette party? I've been to a few. His talent. He's the best commentator in wrestling. He's hysterical. Don Callis, he, he's, he's hysterical, but he's also great. Like, he's he's also great in a serious way. And, like, I learn when I listen to him because he's always throwing in the old school stuff. He's always throwing in wrestling history. Like, he is perfect. He's perfect. Yeah. I mean, it's been said, you know, he he is uh, he's definitely the best best color guy out there. Shot caller up in which here, which is fantastic, uh, and fantastic. We got him on impact. Which there is are cool. no color guys in this era anymore. I feel like no. I feel like everything kind of feels like Monday Night Football. Like I really don't watch WWE much anymore, but if I do pop it on for a second, the commentary it feels more like Monday Night Football. Uh, sometimes that guy Michael Graves he'll do color and he's pretty good, but aside from him, I can't think of anybody. Uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Maro Ronaldo. He's awesome, but other than him, uh, there's really not that many good play-by-play guys in the world of professional wrestling anymore. But Don Callis, he's he's the last of a dying breed. Forget Eli Drake. Don Callis is the last of a dying breed. You know, Eli just started this this last of a dying breed, and you're already you're already giving it to Don Callis. The guy the guys ran with it for like two weeks. You're you're already giving it away. You're already tossing it on the Callis. You know Come I'm on. a big Eli Mark. Come on, most of the show sound bites are Eli Drake Mark. Tell me. Where yeah. Eli Mark's around here? That's I very love true. You. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, from there we got Mackenzie Mitchell backstage with Heather Monroe, a newcomer. I think she's another uh, FSW, you know, mainstay student out there in Vegas. Uh, she's, you know, pretty full of herself, rocking her fur coat. 
She says that, yeah, she knows Sue Young lurks around here in her tattered clothes looking like shit, and she can use some fashion advice. And then Kira Hogan comes in and says Monroe has no idea what she's getting into, warns her to be careful. Kira looks traumatized, pretty rightfully so. And uh, But this Heather Monroe eh, doesn't seem too phased by it. They kind of fade out after that. Uh, Heather Monroe, never heard of her. She had some charisma, though, which I could see she could work She w- in the charisma department. I, think, I liked how her presence was. She was better than, than Ray Lynn in the, in the opener. Heather Monroe is a, uh, we'll see. I don't know if she's going to stay, but so far, so good. So after uh, after we get uh, Kira Hogan looking traumatized, we go back to the uh, parking lot there. It looks like the Samstown Casino, and Scarlett Bordeaux's walking in, and uh, she's getting harassed by a fan for a selfie, and then another fan holding a cup, most likely uh, some booze, angrily pushes the guy away and says, get the hell out of here. I'm here to protect Scarlett. And, she, and Scarlett looks at him and goes, uh, hey, I know you. And she goes, well, Wait, that I got was an-. the guy that sent the dick pics. That could be. That, I think this is the guy who sent a who sent a video in. And she <laughs> says, uh, she goes, I have an idea for you. And then she grabs him by his hair and pulls him away. So we'll find out what happens later. Uh, we go from that to uh, backstage. LAX is out there. Ortiz is clowning Santana for getting out of work by Falaba. And uh, he's showing off his tools, like literally his tools. Uh that was hilarious I, because he definitely got outworked by Fala on this one. Fala was killing him. It was awesome. Well, he was trying to work his knee. Like, what was he saying? Yeah, he was like, mm-hmm. he like pulled out a wrench and he's like, he's like, hey, maybe I need to tweak your knee right here or something. Yeah, Tighten up like, your what? knees. I don't know. I well, think he's hysterical. He's always saying the funny stuff in the promos. Like uh, a few weeks ago when he was behind the bar serving yeah, the yeah. drinks. This time he's got the bag of tools. Like Ortiz is hysterical. I think he's developing into this, like, like he's just zany. Like, they're giving him a lot of freedom to do it. And it's awesome. Yeah, th- their chemistry is starting to shine more uh, in the backstage vignettes. They're great out in the ring, but uh, in the backstage stuff, that chemistry is starting to show more. And uh, they're great, man. It's something very special they have, LAX. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they asked Conan about the OGs. Conan says, you don't mess with the bosses. We won't be seeing them on the street. And with, after what Pena and Phoenix did to them, we're not going to see him in here ever again. So, Kyle, I think that's your confirmation that the OGs are done, man. That that's run is over. But uh, Santana then suggests, hey, let's, you know, how about we uh, we give the Lucha Brothers a title shot? You know, hey, it's only fair. Keep it in the family, he says. Conan says, not right now. No, not right now. I'm not doing it. And then Santana and Ortiz don't understand why. They look really confused. But K-Dog says, nope, not right now, and walks off. Cal, I'm a little confused by this. I want to ask the uh, the listeners here, the Impact Tribe, listening to us here, what the what do you guys think about that? I mean, it was kind of it's always weird to me when champions are throwing out the challenges to challengers. It's like, why are you giving up title shots? You know, like he's like, oh, we'll keep it. I mean, in this regard, I get it. Like they were like, ah, keep it in the family. If we're gonna defend it, let's defend it against the guys in the family. But it's like all about respect. La. The X are all about respect, and the Phoenix and the Penta have earned the respect of LAX, and they're they're good champions, man. That's why. I just feel like challengers should make challenges. It's always weird to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Guys, tell me if you guys think I'm off. If it seems, if it seems more acceptable now, but I think like champions throwing challenges out to the contenders, like what the hell are you doing? Like you you shouldn't. I guess like they they can twist it and say, well, we want to be fighting champions. That's what fighting champions do. I can see that, but uh, I, I don't know. It just seems a little oddly forced or something to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, man. Uh, well, uh, what I want to know, Trent, is what's up Conan's sleep? No idea. What's I'm, the I'm, deal? What do, what do you guys think? Guys, tell us what you think about what, – where do you think the Conan thing's going? Because it's really – dude, I can't even get a read on it. I don't read spoilers, so I don't even want to know. And honestly, man, nobody, like, spoil it. But what do you guys think it is, man? Like, it just seems like it's so odd. <laughs> it just doesn't make I – mean, right now it doesn't add up, but we'll see. But, uh, all right, man, we go from that to the GWN flashback. It just goes back to last year, Sammy's uh, – Sammy Callahan's debut at Bound for Glory 2017. It was LAX versus OVE. They brought in uh, Sammy Callahan, made his debut. Really, you know, selling us on some more Sammy which is always a good thing. He's the man. All right, we go back to there. We go back in the back. Matt Seidel and Ethan Page 
uh, kind of talking about Matt's match coming up later on with Johnny Impact. And Seidel says basically he could see through all the muscles and spray tan, and he's going to make Johnny Impact face his fears and show him the path to enlightenment by opening up his heart, mind, and third eye. Uh, what did you think about this, Kyle? I mean, randomly, Matt Seidel got a title shot, which, before you give an answer, Ethan Page did make sure to mention that this is the former X Division champion. So that maybe they were using that as the, as the hook, saying the guy was a, was a dominant X Division champion and he should he earned a title shot. But coming off the killer cross, Matt, it's like, where, where did Matt Seidel come into all of this after New York? What do you think? Because I don't know. I was confused. His third eye is enlightened, Trent. That's why. I don't know, but it just seemed like where did that come from, though? Like all of a sudden, it's like Matt Seidel's getting the title shot. I get. I mean, yeah, he's a worthy contender, but it's like we got no build or nothing to it. Just randomly, he's the challenger. So I don't know. That am I again? Am I off, guys? Tell me. But uh, we cut from that and we go right to the pool, man. We're going right to the Vegas pool, and we got the Daisy Hit Squad, Cha Cha and Gama Junior, chilling there. Talking about their favorite Indian foods, about uh, Diwali, which is their big celebration. Kyle, it's a big Indian holiday. They're talking about the D- Diwali food, and uh, Rohit Raju says he's he's uh, excited next next week's Thanksgiving. You know, he's he's the he's the he's the American. He's like me, man. He's the whitewashed one. He's Americanized. He's whitewashed. <laughs> he's whitewashed like me, man. He's a brown guy who's like ah, I'm I'm more here than I, I am there. And then Chacha slaps the shit out of him. And it says, he says, you know how much America sucks? You know, crime and this and that. And they don't care about each other. And he just dogs them. And, uh, and Chacha goes. Gama's the best, man. Gama is so funny. <laughs> Which is funnier. It's even funnier because Gama's a Canadian. He's, like, living in Canada. Which is, their, their Thanksgiving was a month and a half ago. So uh, uh, he says, you know what? Next week. We're gonna ruin Thanksgiving. That, that ultimate heel move. That, it's like, dude, that, that's like next in line for Christmas. It's like you ruin Thanksgiving. You're 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 fucked. You got something wrong with you, man. Hates America. Hates America. Um, hey, yeah, that poor guy. I mean, he's Canadian, so I guess he can he can hate America from a from a good bird's eye view. But uh, all right, man, this was a highlight coming up here, Kyle. We go from that. Eli Drake comes out. Making his way down the ramp, Josh men- mentions that he's excited for the uh, second annual Eli Drake Thanksgiving Day Gravy Train Turkey Trot, which uh, they, they I think they showed a clip, Kyle, too, of uh, Chris Adonis last year in the turkey suit, and that cl- that goddamn turkey suit, which has been donned by everybody from AJ Styles to Eric Young to Chris Adonis. Uh, they're they're making this a thing. They had some. They have graphics for it and everything for next week, which is going to be hilarious. The turkey uh, suit is iconic. All right, I iconic. saw somebody tweet that. Uh, oh, why are you guys doing the turkey suit? It's like old TNA. Like, shut up. You shut up. Uh, there's a lot of things from the old TNA that I want to keep. You know, and the turkey suit is one of them. And I love uh, how they dub it the uh, Eli Drake's. Uh, Thanksgiving gravy train turkey trot. I like that. Yeah, I like that. And uh, historically, it's always been one of the more lower rated episodes, right? Because it's on Thanksgiving. So the ratings are never the greatest on that one. So it's like you can get a little goofy, give them something to remember, hype up, you know, and and something you can run with for a while. I think it's I think it's totally fine. Uh, And then so, you know, Eli's in the ring. He reflects on what he did to Joseph Park. Says uh, it's you know it was never about the lawsuit. It was about you know getting in, in into a place where he can just shit on hardcore and, and put an end to this nonsense. Basically, he hates hardcore wrestling. It kind of plays off an interview he did with Alicia Toot on her channel where he's like, "I just hate the flippy shit. I liked it when guys looked like uh, you know bigger men and they had they had a character to them and they had more imp, you know stronger, broader type of moves." So he, he's really, I think he might really be in this mindset. So they're kind of playing off a, a real-life thought process he has. But anyway, Tommy Dreamer comes out, interrupts him, and he tells him hardcore is not just about using weapons and, and, and chairs or whatever. It's, it's a work ethic. And then uh, Dreamer and Drake are about to go at it, but then uh, Drake, retre- he retreats. He's out. He's like, no, 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 I'm not doing this. And he walks out. So... uh Leaving Tommy there. Tommy's over his shit in Vegas, by the way. I think he's over everywhere he goes. I think, Kyle, you love Tommy Dreamer. He's a New York guy like you. 
You, uh, love Tommy. I always say he reminds me of Terry Funk in ECW. That's where totally. he's at right now. 100%. I think you're to- you had a really good comparison on that one. You when just you, think uh, of how Terry Funk was in WCW. He was in WWF. He was in ECW. Tommy's a traveling man. You never know where Tommy's going to pop up next. Lucha Underground. Uh, he's probably on Ring of Honor once in a while. He still pops up in WWE once in a while. Does his own thing with House of Hardcore. He's a traveling man. He is, and and he's like the elder statesman of of uh, pro wrestling, man, which is awesome. But uh, we go from that to uh, Alicia Edwards walks in and interrupts Moose about to get down with some uh, some Vegas. Actually, according to Alicia, she was a little hussy, and uh, she says Moose is not here willingly, but Eddie's on his way here, and she wants Moose to get the hell out of there before he gets there because she's worried what's going to happen again. Moose is like, nah, if you're really worried about Eddie. Don't worry, and, and because Eddie has priors, apparently, uh, he says, "Don't worry, I'll call I'll call nine one one when he gets here. Don't worry moose about it." Moose is a snitch, He's a snitch. Rat ass moose. He even showed his phone. He had nine one one ready to hit send. He was ready to roll. He was he, he was a snitch. He had no that son of a bitch had no qualms about sending Eddie back for his priors. No he respect for the code of the streets. Your Chicago people wouldn't be down with that, Trent. Nah. Chicago people don't snitch. Nah, maybe they do, man. Who knows? A lot of people get shot around here. Maybe somebody's snitching on everybody. Who knows? Somebody's got to start snitching. Some, somebody's be- somebody better start snitching somebody on this goddamn stuff. Start snitching. But yeah, man, Moose is ready to snitch. But uh, you know, hey, she says she better get to her husband before he does because shit's about to go down. She knows it. <laughs> this is another. We cut from that Kyle to a really funny segment. It's uh, Brandon Tolley, which I'm going to reference back to the opening match. We uh, we didn't talk about this, but. They mentioned in the opening match for Brendan Toll, who was the uh, referee in the opening match, him how Tessa was basically giving him a bunch of shit in her last match that he refereed, and they got into it. I guess uh, there was some shoving, or I can't remember offhand, but they basically had beef. And uh, so he's got beef with Tessa. So anyway, Brandon Toll is in the back. He's yelling at the other referees about being an unsafe work environment. Could have been and, part of the uh, lawsuit. Part of the lawsuit. Probably have, maybe he'll jump on the lawsuit. But he was sitting there with uh, Johnny Bravo, uh, senior referee Johnny Bravo, and uh, the uh, the baby ref. And Hit Scarlett me. Scarlett comes in with her new drunk, her new drunk friend that she met in the garage earlier in the show. And uh, he was a super fan who uh, who kind of just jumped in earlier when she was doing a little smoke show segment, and he kind of got in the way of an obsessive fan, so she kind of took him on as her bodyguard. And uh, he's basically like Ralphus. If anybody remembers Ralphus from. Um, WCW during the Jericho days, he uh, this guy is a shirtless, blonde, ponytail, uh, wig-wearing guy with Scarlett's name written all over him and uh, in marker. And I think he says smoke show security and shit. He just looks like a piece of shit, basically. But, uh, Kyle, are you familiar with Ralphus? Do you remember Ralphus? Oh, or- yeah, of course. You know, everybody credits Ralphus, you know, for his uh, stuff with Chris Jericho. But my thing is, I love Ralphus with Norman Smiley. Like, I'm a big sucker for uh, oh, yeah. Screaming Norman. Like, Screaming Norman. Not Norman. Screaming Norman. He was big great. Difference. He was great. Uh, so, anyway, she, uh, she's making all the referees nervous. She goes, well, what's your name? Uh, and he's like, Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo smooth. He was ready to take it on. He, he, he would have jumped right in. Uh, referee Toll was there, too. But then she asked Kid Ref, she goes, are you even legal enough to be here? Eight-year-old. And uh, he runs off. He gets scared and runs off, uh, which is exactly what I expected Kid Ref to do. Eight-year-old. But, uh, all right, man. So then here we go. After uh, Scarlett's had her way with the referees and talking about their uh, authority being sexy to her, uh, we are going right to two sexy guys. Johnny Impact and Matt Seidel. Would I just say that out loud? Maybe I did. All right. Maybe Scarlet finds him sexy. I don't know. Hey, you enough love sexy those boing talk. sound effects. I think you I think you say suspicious stuff on purpose just to bring out the boing sound bite. All right, let's I think it's note. a work. I think you're working. Who doesn't like the boing sound effects? I mean, I don't think people, nobody hates that sound effect. But, uh, I mean, you can't. Listen, Matt Seidel was talking about Johnny Impact's tan and, and muscles earlier. I mean, I'm, you, know, who's, you should be boing that. Boing that earlier. We were talking about that. But anyway, world title match, Impact, Johnny Impact against Matt Seidel. Uh, dude, this was a great back and forth match. These two guys are pretty evenly matched. I think Johnny's a little taller, maybe a little more, a little, little heavier. 
not in the fat way, just a little more muscular. And um, a lot of cool moves, man. We had some standing moonsaults, running double knees, uh, sliding Germans, you know, Ethan Page was on the outside, kind of just stirring some shit up. Uh, Johnny goes for the uh, Starship pain, but then uh, Page, you know, saves Seidel from that at one point. We had a corkscrew press over the top, you know, to take Page out. It was fantastic. Uh, Seidel later on, he covered, he countered the Spanish fly with double knees off the top rope for a near fall. Pretty close. It was actually a really close call. But uh, in the end, Johnny Impact, Starship Payne took the win. Not a long match, but a good match. It was one that, like, I think Seidel looked at it like this is a cool opportunity. It was not the top of the card. But uh, it was, like, think, Kyle, am I wrong? And 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 uh, tri- Impact Tribe, tell me if I'm wrong here. Was this Seidel's first actual title shot? I don't know. Do you remember, Kyle? Do you remember if he had a title shot before? I can't remember him having one. Um, putting us, why would you do that, Trent? Put us on the spot like that. I'm, I'm just you know, need a minute to think about it. Uh, I'm just asking. The whole time I was talking about it, you could have been thinking. But all right, maybe I I'm, feel like I'm, maybe not, I'm the I, asshole. I feel like I feel like we've seen him in the. I don't think I don't think he had one against Aries. I can't remember him having one against Aries. Maybe. Did he have one against Pentagon when Penta had the title for a little bit? I think I'm just thinking about the X division, honestly. Maybe yeah, it could be it. Championship. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to say, Trent, was that, uh, you know, Trent, I really think that Matt Seidel is one of the most underrated wrestlers on the horizon right now because the guy is, he's well-seasoned. He's been wrestling since, what, like 2000, something like that. Like, the guy is just so incredible in the ring and, I really think he is doing the work of his career right now. I think that this character, the third eye character, is the best thing he's done that I've seen. I've been following him for years. I think this is Matt Seidel at his best. And uh, I, I, the thing is with Impact is the roster is so loaded. Like everybody's a contender. Like this, so you want to see Sammy Callahan go to the top. You want to see Eli Drake go to the top. You want to see Brian Cage go to the top. You want to see Killer. Across go to the top. I want to see Matt Seidel go to the top. That's what's so like uh, great about Impact Wrestling is the roster is so stacked. It, I just think about Matt Seidel and uh, like, do you think he could be a heavyweight guy, like a heavyweight championship guy? Could he be a main eventer? Like, could he carry a company? I think what <sighs> is he a mid card uh, specialist? Like, is he the best you could put in your mid card? But is he the type of guy you could put, you know, carrying a company? Could you put the belt on him? You know, man, it's weird to say, but in this era, I can't, you could almost put a belt on anybody nowadays when the way guys are, they're a little smaller and style wise. But I personally don't see it, but I think he could because he can talk too. And that's a big, that's, that's, it's 60 40, man. If you can talk and you got character, which he definitely does, uh, I think he could. Well, it was well, they'll give it to him or not. It's another question, but I think he could. He's got the charisma to carry it, which I think is, like I said, a big part of it. But you know, as a, I'm going to stick off of what you said there, as a guy who works in independent wrestling, uh, you know, with booking and things of that nature, it's interesting because you made a good point. Impact's got like five to seven people ready to take take the next step at all times at all times that is one of the hardest things to do in a pro wrestling environment because right now like i'm faced with stuff at at aw where who are the next guys who are going to be ready to take like who can we you gotta you gotta be able to plug in guys to top spots like immediately you gotta have a roster of 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 uh people ready to be plugged in and out of top spots and to, to to get everybody ready to get all these guys like warmed up and engines ready on like five to seven people at all times, dude, huge talent. Because like you have to, have, you have basically have had to have written them up, up to the up to the last show you've just watched. You have had to have everyone written up properly so you can just plug them in and out. Which, dude, I'm telling you, it's harder than it sounds, man. It really is not as easy as it sounds. So that's a, that's a huge kudos to Impact for having like all these guys ready at all times, including Matt. Like it wasn't. At first, I said, yeah, it was weird that Matt got a title shot. And I still think it was random. 
But at the same time, it was uh, it's not like he's not a believable contender. You know he's what I'm world class. You can't say that he's not world class. Yeah, he's a, he's a believable contender. He's he's the guy who, dude, he held the X Division title for a, a, a while. The dude has a lot going for him. So, you yeah, know, he's, he's a credible guy. But anyway, man, all right. So, cool shit happened after this match, though. Killer Cross. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out to, the te- to everybody here. I want, I want opinions on this one. Killer Cross comes out to the ring smiling. And he admits Johnny Impact defeated him at final hour, retained the belt fair and square. I mean, he kind of built up to his eyes. He's like, I'm going to say, you beat me fair and square. And uh, Cross says he might not be the catalyst for change, but Johnny Impact could be. Cross says, I'm a huge believer in Johnny Impact now. And he offers his assistance to the champ. And he goes to shake Johnny's hand. And Johnny says, I don't trust you. I want nothing to do with you. And he's like, I'm out of here. And he takes off. And Cross is kind of sitting there with his, you know, a little angry, a little thrown off. Dude. Give me your opinion on this. I don't know where the hell this shit is going. Like, what the hell was this all about, man? Tell me. Somebody well, tell me. I said last week on the podcast, Trent, that seeing Killer C- Cross lose a match clean like that, I'm very intrigued to see how he responds, how he reacts. And I, this is what I was waiting for. Uh, coming down the ramp, smiling, uh, just Bowing down, really, just bowing down, admitting that he was defeated, uh, and then offering his services, offering, you know, really to buddy up with the guy. Uh, but Killer Cross, the guy's out of his mind. He's a true sociopath. What do you think? Is about he being that, honest? Is he being genuine? Or is, is this is this a ruse? You know, is he really trying to get closer to the champ and maybe find out his weakness? get closer to him, find out what makes him tick, you know? I don't know. I wouldn't trust a guy like Killer Cross, that's for sure. I I was thinking maybe that's what it is, right? He's trying to get close to, to the champ. Find out his weakness, you know? But Johnny's saying no, and it's like, what do you do? I mean, okay, he said no, now what? I mean, where do you go, man? I, I don't I don't know. I mean, does this, is it eventually that Cross is going to, is going to, you know, pester him, and Johnny finally relents and says, all right, cool, okay, you can we can work together. Is it going to be that, or like, I don't know where it's going. I, I can't even get an idea, I, which is good. I mean, I don't want to know everything. I want I want to be surprised, but... Uh, if I could sum up Impact Wrestling right now in one word, it's unpredictable. Yeah, that's for sure, dude, because I can't predict any. That's why I hate spoilers. I don't... Fuck the spoilers, man. Just watch this. It's, it's, it's episodic TV. It's great. But, uh, all right, man. So, uh, you know, cross, no deal. All right, so we'll see what happens next week. Everything's building the homecoming right now, which is... Uh, Super exciting right now. But I don't trust you. I don't want you anywhere near me, my wife, or my dog. But uh, backstage, Katarina congratulates Jordan Grace on beating her. Everybody's kissing the ass of the people who beat him. You know, I don't get it. Katarina is, is kissing Jordan Grace's ass. Saying, hey, great for great beating the shit out of me last week. That's great. I don't know, guys. Am I wrong? I think this just sounds looks crazy. Why the fuck is she like... Yeah, Jordan, you're great. But then Katarina says, I could have beaten any of given night, but hey. Uh, and then, you know, then, then Jordan's like, nah, you know what? Let's have a match in a couple of weeks if you think you can beat me again. You know, if you actually think you can beat me, let's have a match, another match in a couple of weeks. Again, why the hell is Katarina going to her and buttering her up? Cal, what the, am I missing something, man? What am I doing wrong here? I don't get it. Break this down for me, dude, because I, I can't figure it out. And p- people, please. Our Impact Tribe, tell me if you guys don't think this is crazy, too. Why the hell is Cross going up to Johnny, Katarina going up to Jordan Grace, Tessa giving out title shots to Ty of Valkyrie? Why are all these people, why are the heels playing into the faces? What am I doing wrong? Kyle, please tell me. Please. Good points there, Trent. And I didn't really think of it like that. It's a very uh, interesting way to think about it. I'm, I'm, I'm lost, man. Give me a break on this one. Somebody tell me what the fuck's going on. I thought it was weird how uh, she specifically said uh, a match between them in two weeks. And it's like, uh, yeah, I noticed that too. But then earlier, the Rascals also, Desmond gets a text that uh, their match is in two weeks. And I'm trying to figure out in my head uh, maybe next week, you think they'll do like more of the Thanksgiving episode where like less matches and more like flashback stuff? 
Yeah, I think again, remember historically Thanksgiving, any holiday episodes, whether any company that's run on a holiday episode, historically always the lowest rate of the year. It's uh, it's just people are not watching TV unless it's football. Do a lot uh, of flashback stuff, you know, retrospective, yeah. you know, throughout the year, some of that, uh, and do the uh, Eli Drake's uh, turkey trot. The bonus in, uh, impact has though is that they're on late night. It's it's a nine o'clock, you know, it's 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 a late night show. So maybe by then people are just gonna tune in right like regular. So who knows? But you don't you don't want to waste good shit on a Thanksgiving episode. No way. I There's love like, that. I love uh, catching my wrestling episode after a nice Thanksgiving dinner. Always yeah, living. same. Me Talk too. For that. Always. Me, me too. But hey, we'll see in two weeks. It's gonna be them too. But uh, we go uh, we go from that. Eddie arrives to the arena, starts beating up Moose. There we go. Shit's on. I noticed he knocked Moose's phone legit out of his hand, and uh, it looked like an iPhone 10. I don't know, man. That's a thousand dollar phone, dude. I don't know if Moose is having having that, but uh. Hope he's got phone insurance. I hope so. But uh, brawl is going on backstage. Eddie gets taken away by a couple of guys in blue uniforms. What, Kyle, were these cops or were these, like, institution guys? I think <laughs> I heard some. I thought I heard Josh say something about their institution guys. Did you catch that or am I wrong? Anybody else catch that? Because, I don't know. I think, they're, I think they're committing the guy, man. Taking Eddie back to the funny farm where he belongs. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's one man who can save him, and that one man is Davy Richards. I don't know, dude. I'm I'm wishful thinking on the Davy Richards thing. Injecting him in the neck, you know? Who knows, man? There could be some wacky shit going on with Eddie Edwards. Next, next no, no, year. I'm saying, did, didn't the doctors uh, inject him in the neck or something? Dude, uh, Davy? Oh, yeah, no, Eddie, you're right. Yeah, yeah, They Davey. did. They did, you're right. They did inject him with something. I, totally, I forgot about that. Yeah, they, they, they had the, you know, they had the... They had, the guy's an animal. I had to put him down. Funny farm. Funny farm, indeed. That's where he's going. Uh, he's we go. F- get the uh, the bull goose loony uh, lobotomy. You know the uh, the end of the one flew over the cuckoo's nest. You know that's gonna happen, to Eddie. <laughs> um, all right, we go from that. Sue Young, Heather Monroe. Uh, dude, I missed I missed the grand epic Sue Young entrance. Uh, I don't even think they turned the lights off for this one, did they? I don't know. I missed. What's I, up with you and your fixation on Sue Young's entrances, man? Dude, the, the entrance was a huge part of her character. That entrance was like it's like an Undertaker entrance. I'm serious. People want to say, "Oh, that's a, that's a stretch," dude. When she first started coming out with the bridesmaids and the coffin, and uh, you know, she she was like, it was it was grand. I thought it it looked cool. It had this Undertaker like feel to it it was a big deal entrance Uh, yeah but you know trent when you're producing television everything is down to the clock you know you know that's true yeah and maybe at the pay-per-views they'll do more of the grand entrance that's a good point that's a very good point i I should know that bigger matches you know good point all right i'll give you that one i'll give you that one uh heather monroe i believe was already in the ring uh sue quickly Took her out, man. That was pretty fast. Monroe really didn't stand a chance. She hits a cartwheel elbow to the corner. That's probably the highlight move she hit. Uh, and then uh, I think she got a spin kick after that. That's that, was, that little combo, I think, was her highlight. But uh, she goes back and forth. And then, um, you know, Sue knocks Heather Monroe out with a palm strike and hits that panic switch. That was it. But she didn't really go for the pin after that. She stalks Monroe a little bit more. She had her down, but she kept kind of like going around. Then she went for that mandible claw, instant tap out. I think they're really st- selling the mandible claw, especially in this one, because I think Monroe referred to her tattered clothes and all that. So I think she definitely had to use the, the bloody glove. Hey, uh, man, was it Dancing Mike that loves a good old submission? Or is that dance, the stiller? Dancing, dancing Mike. Dancing oh, Mike was big on the bear hug, right? Yeah, yeah. He loved that bear hug, dude. Mandible so. claw. You got another one, Dancing Mike. Look at these submissions, man. We're really breaking the formula, which is pretty interesting. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna sidebar just for like a minute. I, I was listening to Eric Bischoff's podcast, 83 Weeks, and he was talking about what WCW was doing all this like wacky different shit that nobody did before, which you know ended up working a lot. Of, a lot of it changed the business at the time. And what he mentioned was he goes, we "We're taking a, a formula that was so fixed for so long, and we just broke it and tried something new." And 
tried shit nobody was doing. And he goes, that's, you know, some worked, some didn't. But I'm like, I think Impact is doing a lot of that stuff. Not that submissions are new, but like going back to more like a bear hug, dude. Like, dude, that's the most primitive submission. But it's like what's old is new again. You know what I mean? A mandible claw has been relevant for 20 years. What's old is new again. Maybe that's what they're going for. They're trying to like kind of try shit that no one else is doing. Everybody else is throwing 2,000 super kicks. All right, we're giving you a bear hug. Maybe that's, I don't know. I, yeah, maybe it is different. Maybe like that's why I was wrong. Some people are appealing to that. But, I love uh, the current philosophy, man, because it's very modern, even more, you know, it feels futuristic. It's, uh, but I love the uh, the philosophy of uh, mixing, you know, the modern elements with uh, some of the old school simple stuff that uh, people forget about. Yeah, that's what I, was, I think. You know, hey, maybe we're uh, we're wrong, but hey, or maybe I'm wrong, and and, and thinking some of this was uh, wasn't looking right. But maybe it is starting to appeal. Maybe it's catching people who never saw it before. Uh, so then from that, we. Uh, the referee tries to stop Sue. She chases him off. Kira Hogan runs out to attack Sue. And then Evil Allie comes out from the back, basically looking like Rosemary, man. She walks to the ring, faces Kira, who has no idea what the hell to make of any of this shit. It's Monday then, morning, Allie. Yeah, morning. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, while she was confused, Sue took her took out Kira. And then gave the panic switch while Allie just stood there and watched. And then they stare each other down. And uh, Sue leads her away from, by the wrist. You know, she leads uh, Allie away from the ring. It was uh, kind of weird. But wait, sidebar, uh, you had a meme go viral today, Kyle, that you put together on the uh, We Talk Impact Twitter page. You want to tell people about this meme? Pretty standard meme. You do the comparison picks. You know, I just uh, I took... Uh, Good old sweet Allie, you know, before she uh, was possessed, and yep. uh, the bunny, you know, and uh, th- that was the, uh, you know, that's Friday night, you know, it, that's the vibe for Friday night, and then I did uh, versus Monday morning, and uh, Monday morning would be uh, Demon Allie. The meme totally went on fire, so I appreciate the Impact Tribe, you know, with the retweets and the likes. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, definitely, Which, guys. To our channel, you know, it helps us out a lot, memes yeah, and stuff you- like that. That meme is available at a Twitter handle of We Talk Impact. That's our uh, our Twitter. But yeah, check it out. Give it a retweet and a like. Allie loved it. But uh, where do you think it's going, man? I want to get people's opinions too, guys. Tell me what what you think about this. Where is this storyline going? I mean, I, I figure people are going to say the inevitable Sue Young return. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Rosemary return. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I said that shows ago. I think that uh, it's weird because Allie didn't attack Kira. Notice Allie watched Kira get attacked and Allie let Kira get attacked. Yeah. Allie didn't put her hands on Kira. Is Allie going to put her hands on Kira next week or the week after? I don't know. It, depending on what direction Allie goes in, if Allie gets darker and darker week by week and uh, she ends up, you know, making the switch fully, like she was just. She just had like a stunned look on her face during this. You know, she was just like blank, a very blank expression. It was creepy. It's the storytelling is straight out of a horror movie. And uh, I just think the inevitable is that. Uh, and like I said, shows ago, Rosemary coming back finally. And when Rosemary comes back and it, in a perfect world, this is how I think it would go. Rosemary comes back and Rosemary is disappointed that, you know, Allie because Rosemary is warned Allie. Rosemary warned Allie about the undead realm and everything else, and Allie didn't listen, and look at what happened. And I feel like it would be Rosemary coming back to try to save Allie and, you know, knock sense into her, which would lead to the Rosemary demon bunny feud, Rosemary versus Allie. But then you have Sue Young in the mix, and you have Kira, Young, Kira Hogan in the mix. And just like we were talking about with the men's division, how uh, anybody could be champion, like the same type of uncertainty is in the knockouts division where – you just don't know what direction they're going to go in because everybody's ready to step up at any moment. Good point. Very good point, man. I uh, I think I think it's going to be a very interesting set of tapings where 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 this unfolds and this tapings here. I'm looking forward to that because this is taking us to homecoming. So whatever happens here is going to be culminating at homecoming, and I where I imagine there's going to be a big ass surprise. But all right, man, that's going to bring us to the main event, and. Uh, Kyle, I just realized something, man. We didn't, uh, we did not open the show with the main event like we were supposed to. 
Isn't that what we're supposed to do from now on? Gummy. Oh. Gummy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. BQ. Stuff. So, you know what, Trent? It, it, this actually works perfectly, Trent, because throughout the show, we find a dummy of the week. Dummy. We haven't yeah. found a dummy of the week yet. <laughs> We're at the main of the event. Guess who the dummy of the week is, Trent? You tell us, man. Me and you. Hey. The- dummy, 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 dummy. We're dummy of the week this week, folks, because last week we opened up with the main event. BQ wanted us to do the show opening with the main event. I guess we forgot to do it. Uh, I, I sent Trent the show prep sheet. I, I'm the one that puts everything together, like the order. You know, Dummy. I, I, I yeah. put it all together at the last minute, and I forgot to put the main event at the top of the sheet. Dummy. Yeah. We just did the entire review without opening with the main event. BQ, we're sorry. Dummy. We're the dummies yeah. of the week. Impact Lounge, we're sorry. We did it the old-fashioned way. But next week, we'll open up with the main event. Sorry. Yeah, about, we we make mistakes. This. We're not perfect. How about this? I'll put it out to the loungers, Impact Tribe. Tell us, what do you prefer? You know what? This is the best best way to gauge it, Kyle. You want us to open with the main event, or you want us to go in order? Because nobody really said anything last week. I didn't get any yays or nays. But tell us this time. the horse's mouth. And then the horses are you guys. (laughs) You guys tell us. You want us to open with the main, or you want us to go in order on the show and... uh, and uh, just follow like we like were before. So tell us, guys. Give us feedback. Really, on this one, please, everybody, just throw a comment down. Let us know. Should we go in order or should we start with the main event? What would you guys prefer? What's more appealing? So, all right. Let's get into this main event, Kyle. It is the X Division title match. Brian Cage, the champion, defending against Sammy Callahan. Dude, what a back and forth match. Uh, Cage was beating the shit out of Sammy. Big time. I mean, dude, there was one point where he, like, held Sammy across him, like, horizontally and, like, curled him like he was, a, like, a like a barbell. You remember this? And he, like, then just picks him up after that and, like, throws him around. Uh, Frankensteiner from Callahan. Cage responded with a Frankensteiner. Uh, he goes after the Chris brothers on the floor. I love and, that when they went uh, her Karana for her Karana. Like, you got one, I got one, too. That was amazing. Uh, the Chris eventually got ejected from the match, uh, but then dude Sammy was throwing out some guillotine chokes. Uh, he, Cal, he at one point uh, Cage caught Sammy in a fireman's carry, hit an Oklahoma Stampede style Death Valley driver into the opposite corner, which looked stiff as shit. Um, I'm sorry, Sammy caught him in that, and then look, it, dude, this one threw me off. Man, Sam- you notice Sammy Callahan in this match, like. He really ate his Wheaties this morning. I, oh, I feel like I feel like he he snorted like a pound of cocaine before the match because go back and watch this match, Impact Tribe. Just pay attention to Sammy Callahan. Like he's it's just he's full speed ahead the entire match. Just go 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 go. I snorted a little bit of everything before this match. That's probably what he'll say. <laughs> but he uh, dude, no, that one point where he got Cage up in like a fireman's carry and then like. Stand, he like Death Valley drivered him into a corner. I go, holy fuck, man! Number one, just getting Cage up that high, like, dude, Sammy's not like an overly muscular guy either. Dude, Cage is a fucking giant man. There was there like I've seen both. I've stood next to both of these guys, and like it's nuts. Like Sammy's got some wicked power in there, man. Doesn't look he's not a body guy, but he sure as shit he can work it. But. uh Cage hits some uh, half Nelson slams. Sammy rolls out to the apron. Cage deadlifts, superplexes him back in at one point. Dude, bicycle kicks. Uh, Sammy goes for the knees. Super kicks to the face. Short pile drivers. Ankle locks. Dude, so much back and forth in this match. Like, so much. And uh, Cage popped up at one point. He hits a powerbomb. Drill claw takes the win. Retains. Totally did not see that coming, man. I thought Sammy's taking this belt. Kyle, I, I don't know, man. 
I don't know what you do with Sammy now. I felt like he this was the right time to give Sammy the uh, to title, man. What do you think? Yeah, you're right. But does Sammy really need it? I think so. Does he really need it? He doesn't need it, but it, it would only enhance the character. That's what I'm saying. I think it would only just make it better. Like, dude, the guy, the guy is so fucking hardworking, man. Like, you need to have, like, him carrying a title for you. He deserves it. He deserves it. But, like, he's just so great right now and just on top of his game. Like, it doesn't, like, I, when I look at him, like, he, like, he doesn't need the title, but it, it would look good on him. Yeah. It would look good on him. You're right. He doesn't need it, but it would look good. Like, he can, it, that belt represents all of OV, you know? So I thought it'd be good, but anyway, we might get our chance because after the match, Brian Cage gets on the microphone and he re he announces that he's cashing in the X Division title and he's utilizing the infamous Option C and taking his title shot against Johnny Impact at Homecoming. Nashville, Tennessee. Impact presents Homecoming. And I'm cashing this in. Option C. What? Uh, dude, option C has not been used for, I want to say, nearly six to seven years. And uh, it was introduced by Austin Aries. At Destin- you know, he took the Destination X title shot uh, in 2011. But, dude, we have not seen option C in a long time. What would you think about this? Guys, what did you think about this? Give me, uh, give me some feedback here. What did you guys think about Option C making a return? Kyle, what do you say? You know what, Trent? I'm going to do my homework as soon as this is over. Uh, I feel like you're wrong. I feel like Option C did pop up in the past three years. I feel like there was uh, maybe maybe they're in the Corgan run. I feel like there was an Option C. I, I could be wrong, though. Could be you wrong. Think so? I'm admitting it. I could be wrong. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take a look. But uh, you know what, man? I saw a lot of people complain about this online. I saw people bitching about the option C. Uh, like I get it. A lot of people don't like it because they feel like it cheapens the X division championship. Where every time somebody wins it, it's gonna be just a meal ticket to the you know world championship. So it's like, yeah, I I get that. But, I mean, sometimes it just enhances the storyline. It makes it more interesting. And uh, I liked how um, Brian Cage made the announcement. Like, it wasn't a thing he kept in his back pocket. And then, you know, last minute at the end of a pay-per-view popped up and, you know, changed it at the very last second. You know what I mean? Like, he made the announcement, and that's what they're going with. So, uh, uh, Johnny Impact versus Brian Cage at Homecoming. For the Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, hey, that's not a bad main event. I'm going to give a little history here on option C. I found an old article archived on the ImpactWrestling.com website about option C. And it mentions that it was invented in 2012, not 11, by Aries. And I remember when he did that. That was pretty cool. And then he, you know, he won the world title after that. 2013, Chris Saban used it. And that's when he became world champ against uh, uh, Bully Ray. And then 2014, Aries tried it again, and he was defeated by Lashley. So option C was not successful for him in 2014. In 2015, because 2014, I told you, it was Aries and, and Lashley, where Aries lost. But 2015, Rockstar Spud, he cashed in. Oh, my God. That was one of my favorites ever. How could I forget that? Uh, See, dude, the THC pot sludge pumping through my brain right now. I'm digging through it, heating it up, you know, trying trying to get some, uh, you know, memory in there. Uh, I How could I forget the epic saga of Spud going up against, you know, EC3, Kurt Angle, that that whole, it was July uh, 2015, right? 2015, man. He, uh, he went against Kurt Angle, and he did not win. So, uh, that was that's a great your... match, man. That was a great just saga of events. Did Mike Bennett end up doing it? Because this article I found, it's from 2016, and it talks about if uh, is Mike Bennett going to make option C? And, uh, you know, is he going to utilize option C? I, don't, I can't recall if he did or not. Yeah, Maybe he did. 
But a lot uh, of the Miracles run is very forgettable. Yeah, unfortunately. unfortunately. They had some good stuff, but yeah. But uh, Brian Cage, man, option C. It's going to be Brian Cage in that main event at the um, at, at homecoming. So what do you think? You guys think you guys like Brian Cage? Kyle, do you like Brian Cage? Our Impact Tribe, do you guys like Brian Cage in the main event of homecoming? How does it look? Is it too soon for him to be getting title shots? What do you guys think? Kyle, what do you think about it? I think he's the monster of the company right now. Uh, the guy's huge. He could talk on the mic. Uh, he could work uh, for a guy his size. He could do Lucha Libre moves out there in the ring. Uh, Phenomenal, yeah. I, I think that uh, he's got the look where, like, he could really be a big star in professional wrestling. So I think the company is smart, you know, investing in him. He's hot, you know, he's got that buzz. He's still kind of new in the company. Uh, yeah, you're right. It is a little soon, but uh, you know what? Yeah, strike while the iron's hot on this one. People have been wanting option C. And listen, this could turn into something cool. So we'll see, man. We'll see where it goes. Uh, Brian Cage is a great, is definitely a worthy opponent for Johnny. And uh, definitely excited to see where, uh, where they go with the title come next year. So, like I said, like you mentioned earlier, there's seven guys ready to take spots. It's a hot, it's a hot roster right now. So Cage is just one of them. I mean, who knows if he wins? You know, you, you go to the next guy in the line, man. So a lot of cool stuff coming up, Kyle. That was the November fifteenth edition of Impact Wrestling from Las Vegas. I'm gonna lift off the top five. Yeah. The top five. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the countdown, like Casey Casey, everybody. Yeah. The top five. Yeah. The top five. Kyle, I got a top five for you, bud. You want to hear it? I can't wait. All right, guys, my top five list this week, and next week it's going to be Kyle's, but my top five is the top five cities that Impact Wrestling should do a set of tapings in 2019. And uh, I think that's a good topic, man. I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. And especially with them going all around, you know, New York, Vegas in the last couple months. So anyway, number five. Houston, Texas. The reason I picked Houston, Texas is that it's a hot scene right now. Booker T School is down there. Houston is a real up-and-coming hot indie wrestling scene, so the fans are built in. You can do a partner show with Booker T's thing, something along those lines. Who knows? A couple other schools down there. Houston is hot. So Houston, Texas, number five. Number four, Kyle, going with Atlanta, Georgia. And the reason I say that is I feel like Atlanta's never been the same after WCW was over. Poor and WCW fans. They deserve some wrestling. Some good I, wrestling. Impact I feel they wrestling. do. I feel Impact should try to really take, w, take WCW territory. Hit those Carolinas. Hit Atlanta. Try to do something. There's a bunch of fans down there who don't really watch WWE, WWE man. But Probably a sore subject. Like, they're, they're at the dinner yeah. table looking at each other. They don't talk about wrestling, you know. We don't speak of that in this house. And, you know, Atlanta, Georgia needs wrestling again. You're right, Trent. Impact I think should so. try to invade Atlanta, Georgia. I agree. That's why it's number four on the list. Number three, Detroit, Michigan. I'll tell you why. This is just some insider info. Detroit's a dying market wrestling-wise. There's some promotions up there, but it's not hot. It is a, not a hot market. And for a big city with a huge fan base, it, it, they're not capitalizing on it. Detroit, a rich history. Rich old-school history. Huge, dude. And Detroit's hungry for good wrestling. I think, they're, I think they earned it. Bound for Glory 2006 was in Detroit. I believe that was Jarrett Sting in the main event. So and that was a hot crowd, man. Detroit is is ready for wrestling. Give you got Detroit. Juggalos there. Juggalos are they love wrestling. They're all wrestling fans. Number two, Los Angeles, California. LA's become a hot scene with PWG lately. Uh, you know, in the last bunch of years, PWG's become the thing. A couple other promotions, PCW Ultra's up there. There's a lot of cool Championship wrestling. Championship wrestling from Hollywood. They got a yeah, CWF or CWH, yeah. Um, championship wrestling from Hollywood. Uh, you also have um, God. There's so there's a lot going on in LA in, in that in the in that area. So I think, dude, now's the time. I know they're just in Vegas, which isn't isn't too far, but LA is a hot market. You get the LA branded crowd. So I think LA is number two, and number one, Kyle, the number one city where I feel Impact Wrestling should tour in 2019. This should be no surprise to anybody. They'll probably think I'm totally biased. 
Chicago, Illinois. Oh, good for you. Need I say more that StarCast and All In were huge successes here that featured Impact Talent. We have some of the best independent wrestling here. This is the wrestle town, especially the Midwest. This is the nucleus in the Midwest. And I think if you're gonna if you're a promotion, you need to run in Chicago in terms of if you're looking to get some success success. MLW was just here last week. Drew their biggest crowd ever in Chicago. MLW, which is basically the impact roster in a lot of ways, too. So, dude, it's a hot town. People want to see wrestling as much as possible. So Chicago Illinois. And yes, maybe I'm a little biased because I want to see him in town too. But because you live uh, there. Yeah, because I live here. I'm in Chicago. So I'd love to go. But that's my top five list. I'm a, and Kyle, do you mind if I throw a trivia question out to uh to the to the loungers? Go ahead. I, throw, I thought about this today. I said uh somebody I said I read somewhere somebody's like, Oh, it's Impact's debut in Vegas. And I go, uh uh-uh. uh, no, it was not. No, it was not. I'm going to put this out there to the fans. Uh, Impact had taped in Vegas. There was an episode. I think it might have been a couple episodes, but there was a specific episode taped in Las Vegas for, for when, during the TNA days where a very significant faction was, was born, and it was the Las Vegas tapings. What faction was it? What was the date? Let me know what you, what, if you guys remember. No cheating. Try to remember what faction was formed, and what on uh, what date uh, was that? Did that happen? And last time the TNA f- filmed in Vegas for uh, episodic Impact Wrestling. So guys, let me know in the comments if you remember. Put it down. And, hey, try to come up with it off the top of your head. Don't look it up. It's very easy to look up. Don't look it up. So, Kyle, throw a little trivia question out there, everybody. Hopefully that uh, catches on. But yeah, man, that was the November 15th edition along with the top five in a trivia question. You got anything else to add on to this value meal? Anything? Uh, Trent, Trent, we got to let these people leave sometime. These people got lives they have to go back to. They got to go to bed. They got to eat dinner, whatever they have to do. Guys, we are available on the Impact Lounge on YouTube. This is where you're, you will get the first crack at, the, uh, at this podcast. So always check on the Impact Lounge for great content by us, BQ, Adam, and Roe. A lot going on, a lot of news. Impact Wrestling News is hot and breaking at the Impact Lounge at all times. You can check out us personally on our social media at We Talk Impact on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So just at We Talk Impact. It'll bring up the Total Nonstop Impact podcast. This podcast is directly available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and now spotify we are now on spotify as well rate review subscribe thanks for the recent ratings guys our ratings went up on itunes which is great thank you very much for the recent ratings everybody we appreciate that you can follow me on my personal twitter which is vanilla joke you can follow my band hemi music at hemimusic.com or hemi music on all social media that's the opening theme song for the uh the podcast not this week because we open with the damn rascals getting smoked out but usually that opening theme song is by my band Hemi, hemimusic.com. Check it out. The song's called Revengeance. And uh, and if you want to yell at Kyle, he doesn't have a personal Twitter, but he uses our We Talk Impact Twitter, so yell at him there. But uh, Kyle, anything else? Did I miss anything? Anything at all? Fire up that box, Trent. Yeah, there we go. Guys, thank you very much. We'll catch you next week. Kyle's going to hang out the rascals. See ya. See ya.